Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be creating a card as part of the rainbow challenge or the rainbow card tag. This uh, tag was started by my friend Dawn Woolcycle and she tagged Laura Bassett and then Laura tagged me. So I'm going to be creating a card today using rainbow colors. Um, the, the challenge is basically just to create a card using different colors of the rainbow. You can uh, watercolor, you can paint, you can ink blend, you can do whatever you want as long as you have rainbow colors on your card. So I'm actually going to be using a stamp set from Dawn from W Plus 9. This is the Color My World stamp set that I'm using. And I first took some Saunders watercolor paper and I wanted to draw kind of a, a straight edge or a, a right corner, right angle corner coming off the top of the card. I'm going to have the paint tubes and the palette be at the bottom of my card and then I want this area at the, at the top to sort of look like a separate piece of artwork that I've been painting using all of those paints. So I wanted to make sure that that corner was a completely 90 degree angle. So I used another piece of watercolor paper just as a template so that I could get that corner just right. And now I'm using my Misty stamping tool to make sure I get those stamps stamped perfectly onto the textured watercolor paper. I like to use a Misty stamping tool or a stamp positioner uh, specifically on watercolor paper because of the texture. Sometimes it's hard to get a nice clean impression, but by having a stamp positioner where you can possibly stamp the same image in the same area twice, it takes away some of that pressure of trying to get the perfectly stamped image the first time. So I stamped the palette, the paint brushes, and the two watercolor tubes or paint tubes at the bottom and I also repeated those tubes as well. Then I took some blue painters tape and taped my watercolor piece down to a board. This is going to help it stay completely flat while I paint. And I'm going to do some masking on top of my scene here. I wanted to make sure that the interior of the letters on the word color were going to remain white while I paint over the top. And I also wanted to paint the perimeter around my uh, watercolor piece at the very top of the my watercolor piece here. That like artwork within the artwork, if that makes sense. I wanted to make sure that I could paint that entire area without any problems, without having the paint go outside of that area. So I'm just adding some more of this masking fluid. The particular masking fluid that I'm using today is drying gum. I find that it works really, really well on a variety of different watercolor papers, and I generally don't have any problems with it as long as I let the drying gum completely dry before I start painting, and then let the painting completely dry before I remove the drying gum. Just have to make sure everything is dry whenever you're uh, putting on or taking off on your project. So the paints I'm using today are from Dr. P.H. Martins. These are radiant watercolors. I mentioned in last week's video that, or a couple weeks ago actually, that when I use my radiant watercolors, I've only ever really done lettering with them. I've never painted with them. So I thought that would be a fun challenge for myself to go ahead and try painting with the radiant watercolors. And they worked wonderfully. I loved the vibrant, saturated color with all of these paints. So I'm kind of doing some really messy little splotches of color. I'm not being very precise with this because I just really want a wash of color. This is eventually going to become a galaxy texture. I've done quite a few galaxies here on my uh, blog and at YouTube over the past few years and every time I do one I do it a little bit different and I think they're actually very forgiving. <laughs> I think you put the colors on, you add some black and you're like, oh I don't know, this doesn't really look like a galaxy. The minute you add those stars, it looks like a galaxy, I promise. So if you have never created a galaxy texture with paints or a galaxy scene with paints, go ahead and give it a try. It's super fun and easy, and you can really do it with any colors that you want. So I'm adding more of those colors on. I just want to get a nice kind of uh, basic underlayer of paints going here. So after I had all that color on, I used my heat tool to speed up the drying process. I haven't had any problems using a heat tool on top of the drying gum masking fluid in the past, so I wasn't worried about using it on it today either. Adding some more color on top just to get some more saturated areas of color. Adding a little bit more blue up there at the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry it once more to make sure that everything is dry and in place. 
I then took a distress sprayer spray bottle and I sprayed into my hand and sprinkled on some water. This is going to give a little bit of texture to the painted area that I've created. You definitely don't have to do this step, but I think find it a little bit fun to do it. The water reactivates the paint underneath and then you can dab off the water and it takes off some of the paint as well. So then you can get those water droplet areas. I also wanted to show you that if you lock the distress sprayer and then still pump the trigger, you get really um, kind of muffled, I don't know how else to describe it, kind of muffled sprays. So there's a little bit more control to the spray. You get bigger water droplets. It's just a different way to use that sprayer. So after I dabbed off those droplets, I hit it with my heat tool once more. And now I'm using some black radiant concentrated watercolor. And this is going to create the real galaxy look to this top piece here. And the one thing I wanted to mention that when I paint on the black, I try to do it in almost like a circular motion. It looks almost like clouds coming in. I think that gives it a little bit more of a galaxy look as opposed to having more rough, ragged edges. So I'm trying to get some more soft, rounded edges on the areas where there's black. So I'm thinking in my mind, I want to kind of fill in these areas, but leave some of the color kind of glowing from underneath. And I also want some areas that are super black and some areas that are a little bit more of a transparent black. So I'm going to water down that black as I go along and it's going to let some of the color kind of, uh, like I said before, glow through the layers and give it a little bit more of a galaxy look. So now it's starting to take shape. It was looking pretty scary there for a minute, but I do love how it started to turn out. I'm going to hit this with my heat tool once again to dry everything. And then I'm going to start working on the stars. I'm using some white gouache from Whole Bean today. This is permanent white. And I'm just going to put that on a palette and then add a little bit of water. I'm using a clear acrylic block to help me get some water droplets. And because I can't really um, control where those droplets of paint go, I'm covering up the bottom portion of my picture here with some paper towels. And then I'm using that acrylic block to splatter on some of that white paint. I find that this is an easier way to control the splatter a little bit. And I just have a little bit more control this way. Added some more paint. I needed a little more paint to get that going. Now I'm getting all of those little tiny stars. I also used my paintbrush and drew on some little circles to create more distinct stars, larger ones, so that it looks a little bit more natural. And then it was time to take off the masking fluid. Now I had a lot of color that it collected on top of the masking fluid and I didn't want that to sort of smudge and spread as I removed the masking fluid. So I'm taking a wet baby wipe and I'm very carefully kind of just gliding along that masking fluid and picking up all of that color. This is going to make it so as I remove the masking fluid with an adhesive remover, I don't have any kind of paint colors spreading and smudging around all over my project. So I've just rubbed off all of that masking fluid. I'm going to take it off those letters on the word, word color as well. And those come off really super easy and I love that it protected all of that white underneath. Even though that was a really, really small area, I think it really needed that white color coming through. I'm going to take some more of that black paint and I've watered it down quite a bit and I'm going to add some of that color to the paint tubes and also the brush and the palette. This is going to give those paint tubes a more finished look, makes them look like they might be silver or even a black uh, paint tube. I think it looks really nice to have all of those finished up. And then I put a shadow underneath my painting at the top. I wanted to make sure that it looked like this painting was real and coming off of the page. So I've just added some more of that black and then brought some more water in to soften out those edges. After I have the bottom portion done, I'll go ahead and turn my piece here and add just a faint shadow on the other side. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking that the, the light is coming from the top left and it's coming down onto the cart so more shadow would be on the things um, on the on, on the right side of the objects so this would just be a very faint shadow right there I'm intensifying that shadow over on the right and then I'll go ahead and add shadows to the objects down below as well hit that with my heat tool to make sure everything was dry and I'm going to take it off the board and start putting the card together 
I have to trim off those areas where the tape was. So I'm just trimming off a little bit off each side. And it's going to make it so that the entire piece is slightly smaller than a 5 by 7 card. And because I want my 5 by 7 card to open from the top, I'm going to have to do a little bit of creative card base creating. I've got two pieces of black cardstock here. They're each 5 inches wide. One is 7 and a half inches tall and the other is just 7 inches tall. I'm taking the taller one and I'm scoring it at half an inch. And then I'll go ahead and fold down that flap and that's going to make the main area be 5 by 7. Then I'll take that flap and open it up and I'll be putting some adhesive on the inside of the flap. This is going to make it so that I can attach the two pieces together and create a top folding 5 by 7 card. So I'll add some Tombow Extreme Adhesive, put those two together and then fold down that flap. Now because you fold down the flap, it sort of pushes that other panel down a little bit. So you do have to kind of retrim it and make sure those two bottoms meet up in the perfect area. So I just put that back into my paper trimmer and just really carefully trim off that excess on the bottom. I use some 3M foam tape to put on my watercolor piece and I just press that down onto the black card base. So that finishes the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to be tagging two of my friends for this challenge. I'm going to tag my friend Jennifer McGuire. She's not gonna have any problem with this because she loves rainbows and anything colorful. And I'm also tagging my friend Kelly Latavola. Their YouTube channels are linked down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.